I'm not going to say that nobody warned me how bad Nova Scotian winters could be, but I figured I've lived in Alberta before. How bad could it get? Besides, who wouldn't want a beautiful white Christmas in a cozy camper? Oh, God. Bloody freezing. Freezing. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Everybody. Uh, this is our very first Christmas here in Nova Scotia in a snowstorm, no less, in the camper. We've got no regrets, have we, love, moving from Vancouver Island to Nova Scotia? No. Um, no, it's great here. Yeah, really glad we did this. And who knows, by next Christmas, maybe we'll be in the church. <laughs> Probably the year after. No! Now, I'm going to warm up with a nice traditional bevy of Irish cream. What are you going to have, love? I'm going to have some hot chocolate in a bit. Hot chocolate? Oh, I might have some of that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Oh, the beverage of the gods. Uh, oh, hang on. That'll make it 18 plus content. Um, this is just coffee cream is what it is. And uh, you didn't see that. Cheers. Uh, and cheers to you, everybody. Oh, God. We're going to need a bigger bottle. Right, in this video, I'm going to show you guys my best images of 2022 and 2021. Because for some reason, I just didn't do one of these videos last year. So that's a whole two years of my best landscape photography that I want to showcase to you guys. And what I'm hoping you'll get out of it is the insights that I'm going to give you into exactly how I shot the image and any little processing tweaks that I did to achieve the finished result. But first, I've got an announcement to make. Now, every now and then, and it's not very often, is it, love? I mentioned my book. Chasing Awe with Gavin Hardcastle. And I'm not going to mention it even once today, even though there are still a few of those available for purchase, because what I've gone ahead and done is I've listened to you guys. This is proof that I pay attention to what you guys want. And one of the things that you're all asking for for the last two years is when you're going to do an ebook version of that book, because we don't want to pay all that shipping. Well, I've gone ahead and I've created the ebook version of Chasing Awe with Gavin Hardcastle, which is on sale right now and discounted for the next few days. And in addition to that, I'm also putting all of my online photography courses on sale 50% off. Cheers to that. There's a link in the description below. If you haven't already left to go and buy that discounted ebook that's on sale right now, did you know that only about 30% of my subscribers get notifications when I put new videos. Did, did, you, did you know about that? No. You subscribed, aren't you? No. Anyway, yeah, so if you are subscribed to the channel, just hit that little bell icon next to the subscribe button and you should get to see notifications when I post new videos. Right, let's get straight on to this showcase and explain to you how I got some of my best images of the last two years. Okay, so this first one, Honeycomb Glow. So we went out to the Gulf Islands near Vancouver Island, and that was such a sketchy morning we basically had to climb along these rock faces that look like this strange honeycomb surface in the dark the tide was coming in it was wet and slippery it was quite sketchy and i think was this the third time we tried or something i think so we tried before and it, it was just too dangerous anyway we finally got out there so this this moment that you can see here is just the light was just starting to hit and it was one of those sunrises where it's everything that you ever dream of, where you've got just this little sliver of a gap on the horizon, but the rest of the sky is completely full of clouds. When you get those situations, you know it's going to light up. And I felt really confident. So the truth is, with this composition that you see here, I was kind of doing a half-assed effort at composing because I thought, I believed, the light was going to really kick off. I didn't realise that this shot here, which was kind of like my test shot, this moment, was the best of the light that morning. It didn't get any better, it just kind of fizzled off. And what I focused on was that, that pinnacle that you could see in the middle, that, that 
C-stack, if you want to call it that, that rock formation right in the center of frame. I focused on that and that enabled me to get sharp focus from front to back. And uh, I believe it was shot F11. I'll put the EXIF data on. If I'm wrong there, I apologize, but I think it was F11. And yeah, that was a, a really easy shot to, to process and a really easy shot to, to create. No real technical insights there. The only thing I would say is I made sure not to have the circular polarizer on, which I almost always have on, but for this shot, I took it off because I wanted that reflection that you can see in the water there to be a full power reflection. I didn't want to lose any of that. So in this case, it was one of the rare occasions where I took off the polarizer. Good, good memory that, wasn't it, love? Yeah. Okay, this next one, Spiralicious. This was a, a, a journey with Grump, Grumpacious. Me and Grumpton went out there on the uh, Juan de Fuca trail to shoot this image. And uh, I, I just really loved this shot because there's so many elements to work with here. You've got this wonderful background with that cedar tree that's collapsed over this canyon. You've got three waterfalls. And then of course you've got these spiraling bubbles. So how I shot this image, basically it's a combination of different exposures. I, I think I may have focus stacked, I'm not entirely sure, but if I did focus stack, I would have focused on the far background in the center of the frame where you can see those two falls. And then again in the foreground, and I would have focused on the bubbles that are in the water. And then to get that sort of spiraling that you see there of the bubbles, I just played around with uh, different shutter speeds and you can actually achieve that kind of, uh, that kind of effect. Depends on how fast they're moving, uh, but you can achieve it somewhere between one second to five seconds. Um, I forget what this was. I'll, I'll put the EXIF data on there. I might be surprised by how long it is. And one thing that you can do if you don't have an ND filter with you is if you've got a polarizer, by all means polarize it so that there's a bit less light getting into the lens, but also just stop down all the way to F22 or whatever your lowest aperture is. And don't worry about diffraction because you're just gonna mask in the spiral areas from that frame. So if you've got a bit of diffraction, it's getting a bit soft. Don't worry about it. That part of the image is soft anyway. And then you can just mask that in to some other frames that you shot that were perhaps F11 or something like that. So that is spiralicious. I really like that shot. Okay, this next image is probably one of my best images of all time and that that's that's quite the statement this is skull canyon so this was another a trip with uh, with grumpacious and yourself and wayne and this spot is quite difficult to get to so you have to drive it's about an eight hour round trip for driving so you have to climb down this sketchy trail with a rope and uh, it's not too bad if all you've got is a camera bag, but I was carrying my camera bag and I was carrying a dinghy, a blow up dinghy. And the, the combined weight of myself, which is, you know, considerable, plus the camera bag, plus the dinghy, tripod and all that business, uh, I, I ended up ripping my shoulder out. I think I, I tore my rotator cuff. So that was not a good way to start the day. And then when we got to the bottom, I immediately fell in the river. <laughs> So it wasn't going good, was it, this day? And I didn't have high hopes. But anyway, we, we blew up the dinghy and we paddled in and we all got into this canyon. So you can't actually see this, this composition from where you enter the, the canyon. You have to actually get in there, get around the corner before you can actually see this composition. And I just absolutely, as soon as I saw it, I just thought, wow, this, this is amazing. And of course I had to focus stack this. So I did it in three shots. So I focused on the very background where you can see those ferns on the, the cliff there. And then I focused sort of about halfway between that wall and myself on those ridges that you can see on the left there. And then of course I focused on the immediate foreground right just below the camera. And I just stitched all those together to get that, that shot. And again, this is another one of the rare occasions where I didn't use the polarizer because it was dark and I needed to get as much light in there as I could. And of course I wanted all of that bouncing green light to reflect off of that wet surface. So I took off the polarizer and that just gave that a little bit of a pop. And then to put it all together, I did it, uh, you know, in Photoshop, I just stitched them together to create that focus stack. 
bit of dodging and burning, bit of contrast, and that was it. Oh God, that's funny. Right, on to the next image. Okay, this one, the Alpine nightclub. These are the exact conditions that I was hoping to get. And it was one of those, we'd been watching the forecast all summer long. And I think this was mid August, wasn't it? We went up there with Eric and Colin, I think. Yeah. We knew that there'd be wildflowers because Eric had been up there the week before. And I didn't want to go on a blue sky day. I wanted to go on a day where there would be some clouds, you know, and at any time that it says a mountain location is going to be intermittently sunny and cloudy, you have a chance of good light. And this is exactly what I was hoping to get. And for, you know, one of the rare occasions, I, I did finally get it. And this was a sunset shot. And of course I had to focus stack right from, I think that the camera was maybe like, I don't know, eight inches from those little wildflowers because they're really kind of tiny. And I don't know if they're flowers or some kind of heather, but whatever they are, they're absolutely gorgeous. So I had to focus on those and I had to do a lot more than three. I think I maybe did six uh, focused frames from immediately in front of me, right through to those distant peaks that you can see there. And then once I'd focused on the peaks in the background, I just continued shooting repeatedly to do a bit of a time blend because I knew because the clouds were just wafting in and that little shot in the center, that little gap in the center where you can see the three peaks, it would open up and then it would close up and then it would open up. So I, I just shot frame after frame after frame after frame so that when I was putting it all together, I could just pick the best background shot and then blend that with my foreground shots. And I'm really happy with how that one turned out. What, what do you think to that day, love? Did you have a good trip on that one? Minus the hike, yeah. You didn't like the hike? And no sleep. So you didn't like the hiking part. You didn't like the lack of sleep. What about the food? Did you enjoy the food? I didn't like the food, no. No, I didn't like the food. food Basically what, what I'm hearing and, and what I back up is that Backcountry camping in the mountains is a miserable experience and it's an, a lesson in abject misery. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Don't ever do it. It's terrible. Okay, this next image, blueberry milk. Oh my God, what a morning that was. So this is Abraham Lake up in the Canadian Rockies. And um, we'd been shooting here for a few days. We kept coming and going and it, the conditions were just never right. And this was our last attempt. And it was, it could not have been more perfect. And I think the reason why this shot works, so, so there's not really much in terms of uh, technique here. This was when I was shooting with the Fuji GFX 100S medium format camera and I think it was the is it a 100 to 200 lens and it was zoomed in and I had slight shallow depth of field I wanted something of a blur on those trees that you can see way on the background but not too much of a blur but I think what makes this shot so interesting is the soft light so this was before sunrise so it was there was no hard light because if I'd have waited until sunrise and the, the sun pops up and the light gets harder, what you would have seen is one half of the trunk in shadow and one half really bright. And that's not what you're seeing in this image. What you're seeing is a very soft, even light. And that makes the reflection a lot more impactful. It's more of a mirror reflection. And then of course, because it was just on the tail end of blue hour, it wasn't quite sunrise, it's still a little bit dark and so that was forcing these long exposures i think this was 15 seconds if if i if i remember rightly but i'll put the xf data on i might be wrong but yeah this everything just came together for this shot the colors the softness of the light the time of day allowing for that long exposure and it wasn't too windy either so the leaves weren't went blurred the, these were all the challenges that we were struggling with for four days up until i got this shot and then once i got this shot it was like yes finally all of those days of hard work have, have paid off and i had that photographer's high for about a week that, that was a long lasting one what was your favorite memory of that trip well there was those wild horses i don't think they were wild oh. that someone had brought them yeah it was next to their rv someone's pet pet horses 
but they were quite beautiful to see a couple of gorgeous horses out out there underneath those mountains majestic okay this next one the last gasp <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about this shot because it was one of the easiest shots I've ever made. There really wasn't any any technique. Um, obviously, there's a lot of dynamic range there. So once I'd got the composition set up, I just had to make sure that I bracketed each exposure uh, for the shadows and the sort of correct exposure and then that the highlights just so that I could blend all of that together an exposure blend for the dynamic range. So as you can see, the, the sun popping out through that that edge of that mountain there was really bright and then in the in the sort of shadows of the mountain it was really quite dark so i just made sure that i bracketed so that i could put it all together and that's that's one of my favorite shots from that trip what was your favorite memory of that trip oh when brent was pretending that girl was his girl yeah who's he fooling she'd never fall for him Sorry, Brent. And pretend to be my girlfriend um, ju just on the bus ride back. That, that, that's all. Yeah, I don't think so. All of these um, these images, not all of them have videos, but the ones that do, I'll put links to them down in the description. Okay, so this next one, this is another one from Abraham Lake. Liquid stage. Whoa. Yeah. So this image was all about color. And again, it was when I was shooting with the Fuji. And what I loved about that camera is that you could, you could actually have that aspect ratio there, that pano aspect ratio on the display. So you can compose your panos in the field without worrying about, oh, maybe I didn't compose it right. You know, like if you have to crop it later, kind of screwed if you didn't get it right whereas on that fuji you already have it on the display and it just everything just looks amazing with that pano crop and i framed this up because i just really loved those two trees in the foreground and then that beautiful color palette of yellow and blue so those those yellow trees reflected in that water and then those silvery trunks and again it's a little bit like that that other shot of abraham lake this was after the sun had gone down so the light all of a sudden it becomes soft instead of having one half of the tree black and one half of the tree white which is just ugly just contrasty and too intense with this softer light it's just a, a far more sort of enchanting image and i did have to focus stack that so I, I focused from those trees that you can see in the foreground right back maybe several exposures right through to those mountains in the background and then blended that together I'm getting through this uh, coffee cream. That's it. I have to go and get another bottle. Okay, this next image, gold patch. Remember that one? Yeah, I remember that one. The light on this morning, this is sunrise, just it was everything I'd hoped for. And so how I captured this shot is that I just set up my composition. I did my focus stack from front to back. I don't know, three to five exposures with different focus points, focusing on the leaves in the foreground, focusing on the other side of the, uh, the pond there, and then focusing on the distant peaks. Just got all of those frames first. And then once I've got to my peaks shot, I just kind of keep the focus there and just keep shooting image after image after image as the light moves through the scene because those clouds are moving so quick you have these golden patches of light hitting all of these surfaces the trees the mountains the hills moving really really quickly so i shot i don't know 20 maybe even 50 frames while that was going on it was just a light show so that later on i could pick the ones i liked best and then because i'd already got my leaves shots from earlier I could just blend those in with a focus stack. Absolutely beautiful morning. And uh, if you want to see a video of exactly how I processed that image, check out my online photography course, Photoshop for Morons, which is on sale right now. There's a link in the description. So what do you remember from that morning? I think Grumpton was a bit gassy. He was extremely gassy. It was quite shocking. 
Oh, this next one. This is a personal favorite of mine. And this is called Cobalt Basin. Brent and I got up in the freezing cold. You, you stayed in the tent, didn't you? In the freezing cold. <laughs> but at least you're in your down jacket, down, down sleeping bag. And we, we had our uh, terrible instant coffee with a granola bar for breakfast. And we hiked all the way from campground up to this viewpoint. And uh, it was freezing. Uh, mind you, by the time we got up there, we were completely covered in sweat. But it was just a miserable morning. And I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't know that I had a shot until I got back home. So when I was shooting this, this frame, I just didn't think it was that good because the light was, it was not what I had in my mind. I was expecting, I don't know, I was expecting the peaks to light up and glow and that, that just didn't happen. So I was kind of disappointed and deflated. But when I looked at the images afterwards, I thought, man, I really like that soft sort of gray light and that dusting of fresh snow really helped to make it pop. And that was the morning, it was, I, I was really upset. I spilled my noodles on the trail. I was just about to, I was starving. I was freezing cold and I was just about to chow down on my hot noodles and then I spilled them on the trail. And that's the, that's the video where Brent's telling me to pick up my saggy bag of noodles and called me a dirty Englishman. I was really looking forward to that. Come on, clean it. Mm. Clean it. You're gonna clean up that saggy bag of noodles, you dirty Englishman. Oh yeah. Right, this next image, Steelers J. This was up at Lake Agnes, uh, near Lake Louise. Was it last September? It was, it was last September. And I absolutely loved this morning. Now, here's the thing about locations like this. When landscape photographers like me shoot these types of images, you're looking at this tranquil, beautiful scene of complete serenity. But the reality is it was like a carnival there that morning. It was so busy. Back in the day, nobody would get up for a sunrise hike. Nobody. You could kind of like guarantee that you'd have the place all to yourself. And I don't know what's happened, but every, everyone's become tough now. Everyone's happy to get up at 4 a.m. and hike up a brutal trail for sunrise, whereas they didn't used to be. So I, I guess it's people like me that's to blame for that. No one but myself to blame. So how I got this shot, obviously I bracketed for all of the dynamic range. So I got all of my detail in the shadows and the highlights. So I did a few frames for that. And I focus stacked as well because I was really close to those branches that you could see in the water. And then I shot several frames of that bird. So, so that, that Steelers J there is, is not pasted in. That's, that was actually there. But I did take several frames of that bird in different positions because I just wanted to choose which one I would like best later on. And that was the one that I, I liked the best. But I, I also love the color of him because, or her, is, is it a male or a female? I don't know. But I like the color because it just, it just contrasts nicely with the yellow tones in the image and also complements the blue tones in the sky and the water there. So very happy with how that one turned out. Did you enjoy that morning, love? Did you call it a Steelers, Jay? Because it was stealing all your snacks. Yes. Yes. It, actually, that that wasn't the one that that stole the sandwich right out of my hand. That was the other one. Bloody cute, though. Yeah. Cheeky little buggers. I, I just want to cuddle one. Is that is there something wrong with that? No, I want it. I want to cuddle one. Oh, that's good. That's good, boss. Isn't it? Okay, this next one. I called this painting the walls. So this is down at Sombrio Beach on Vancouver Island. And anyone looking at this, you'd be forgiven for thinking that those beautiful golden rays of light are fake, but they're not, they're, they're totally real. And the truth is, if you go there, anytime during the winter, when there's enough water flow coming through that, uh, that canyon, because I'm standing in the waterfall, that little bit of water that you can see in the foreground is just by my feet. And the waterfall itself was just, <laughs> pouring on my shoulders. When there's enough water, that whole canyon is full of spray. It's just constant. And so if you get a sunny day, as soon as that sun comes in in the afternoon and hits that spray, guaranteed light rays. And uh, the tricky thing about that 
is trying to not get all of that water, that spray, on your lens. So you would have to shoot and then and then wipe it and then within a second and a half it's completely covered so you don't have long to get that kind of shot and so i shot many many frames it it, it was challenging and i i think i focus stacked I, i'm not entirely sure to be quite honest with you because i was under so much pressure to get it because not only are you getting soaked and drenched by the, the water but also as the sun is moving, the position of those light rays are constantly changing. So I have some from earlier where they're, they're much higher and they don't have that same color. They're a bit more white, but as the sun starts to drop, they get more orange and they come at a, a lower angle. And that's, that's what I was after. So I honestly can't remember if I stacked that or not, because I was in a bit of a bit of a dither because I was just getting completely drenched. And again, like the others, uh, there's a, there's a link to that video in the description below. Funny story about that that shoot when I was shooting that split second there. Do you want to do you want to tell them? I just heard yelling, and I thought you were yelling at me. Yeah. So I ran out, sad. <laughs> well, actually, I was I was yelling in ecstasy, but Amanda thought that I was screaming at her because she. Out of the shot. Yeah, because she walked into my frame, <laughs> which didn't bother me. It looked kind of good, <laughs> but you thought I was screaming at you to to get out. So then I, I sat on a log sulking because <laughs> i got out there and she was all upset and bottom lip out what's wrong <laughs> merry christmas yeah i might have to have a hot chocolate right on to this next image this one is called ghosts in the wood woods what are you doing making hot chocolate i'm trying to record this thing a bit noisy but i'm cold can i have one yeah all right Honestly, she might as well just add water to the tin. Anyway, at this point, I'm not even halfway through my images, so I figured I would maybe make a separate video for the rest, but only if you guys really want to see it. So, post a comment, and if I get enough votes, I'll do the rest. <laughs> <laughs> 